morning everyone uh, welcome to the sixth episode of inside series by am calcutta uh, today we have amongst us uh, professor anivran pant from the strategic management group uh, thanks a lot sir for taking time out uh, to discuss uh, the issues with us it's my pleasure yeah. so uh, today we'll be discussing about the evolution and the growth of the indian it sector uh, the indian it industry as you all know uh, with a strong revenue base of 115 billion us dollars has been a significant contributor of 8% uh, to the gdp growth of the country and uh, professor uh, and uh, sir here has uh, uh, a lot of experience in this sector and he will be sharing his valuable insights with us so sir i will be starting with a very general question so what do you uh, think are the uh, challenges that indian firms face uh, while going global so uh, raga uh, at the outset i'd say that that is a very interesting question to start with because uh, the indian it industry has been uh, essentially an outward oriented industry the ind and by the indian it industry of course i mean specifically the indian it services industry uh, that said uh, and i'd like to uh, you know make a uh, underline a point that you uh, made earlier i do not have experience in this industry so to speak though i have studied this industry and i have an outsider's perspective which is valuable in parts and but it also doesn't have the practitioners intimacy in terms of the challenges that indian firms face which interesting apply interestingly apply also to this industry i i think that these can be best understood in terms of what we call uh, the liabilities of origin uh, let me spend a few minutes on what we mean by liabilities of origin when firms go abroad they face challenges because they enter unknown terrain the phrase uh, liability of foreignness is has been used extensively in the international business literature to explain this phenomenon mm -hmm. i would argue that in addition forms from countries like india and i'll explain what i mean by countries like india face an additional set of challenges which we would call the liabilities of origin not only do they face the liability of foreignness which is that of being a stranger in a strange land so to speak they also face the liabilities of origin which is a set of disadvantages that emanates from their origin in a certain location in this case that of india and what we mean by their location in india is that being headquartered or having the base of your operations in a developing slash emerging economy like india and i'm using the two synonymously uh, over here imbues you in a certain way with a or imposes on you a certain burden there is the set of disadvantages that relate to the institutional context to start with, right and what are these disadvantages these are the disadvantages pertaining to the lack of uh, adequate managerial talent for going abroad the lack of patient capital which you need in abundance for going abroad because internationalization is not something that bears fruit immediately these resources so to speak these institutional resources are not available in abundance in developing slash emerging economies and they thereby constitute a liability for the firm from these countries that is seeking to go abroad there is also the whole issue of perception in those countries now i spoke of the liability of foreignness all foreign firms have the liability of foreignness so to speak amongst the foreign firms those that are from countries like india which are perceived to have and here the important word is perception perceived to have low quality face an additional disadvantage mind you that this perception is independent of actual underlying quality it is possible that the perception accurately gauges the underlying quality but more likely than not the perception is independent of that quality and even as you raise your quality levels mm -hmm. the perception continues may continue to be negative this is the other part of the so called liabilities of origin and there's a third part which emanates from the so called organizational context and that is that firms from 
India, for example, that are seeking to go abroad also face challenges in terms of the cognitive processes inside their organizations, in terms of self-doubt. Can we really pull this off? Because there aren't too many exemplars. To a certain extent, with a whole series of big ticket acquisitions in recent years, you would say that perhaps this has changed. Yet the incidence of overseas growth, either inorganically through acquisitions or organically, mm -hmm. is not really deeply, has not really deeply seeped into the broader population of growing Indian firms. So that element of self-doubt, or it could also go to the other extreme, overconfidence, given that you do not understand what it takes to go international, you don't have too many peer cases, you could also suffer from overconfidence. So, there are these multiple layers at the institutional, organizational and the competitive level that shape what we call the liabilities of origin. And I do believe that this constitutes a unique, so to say, burden that Indian firms have to carry or confront when they go abroad. So in view of the various factors that you discuss, discuss here, how do you think the Indian IT sector approach this problem and how were they able to overcome these specific challenges that you mentioned? Well, uh, so th there are two ways I would really address this question. Did the Indian IT industry take cognizance of these problems and figure out a strategy, so to speak? I'm not sure. Partly <coughs> what they did has emerged through a certain process of improvisation as you engage with the uncertainty outside and the opportunity outside. That said, looking back, we can see a certain pattern, which I think is fairly instructive. And uh, what we see in that pattern is attention to the process of building legitimacy, or to use a more popular, or uh, you know, uh, use common parlance, credibility. Right. So, how do you build credibility in host countries? Given all those issues that we discussed earlier, in particular, you need to confront the issue of perception. So Indian IT services, let's assume that Indian IT services is able to provide a very high quality of uh, services, uh, reli high reliability, etc, uh, etc. Et but your clients in the US, let's say they still see you as coming from the land of snake charmers. How do you confront that? That is where you need to build this process of credibility. So. Building credibility under such conditions is something that typically strategy does not emphasize, but that has been, I would suggest, central to how these firms build their advantage in the United States. So like, what, what is this process of legitimization, if you could like throw some more light on it? Indeed. So, um, let's continue with this example of the Indian IT services industry. There are few things that stand out. One is... Uh, explicit attention to key host country uh, stakeholders. Now who would these key host country stakeholders be? These are, you know, one way of putting it is to look at the clients who are also opinion makers, right? the lead clients. Also attention to, so there was, uh, you could argue that in the early years Indian firms gave disproportionate value to some of the big clients, the early clients, for example, General Electric, because recommendations emerging from such key clients hold a lot of value in the uh, host country. Right? And also engaging with the institutions and the norms of that country. So, for example, we've, you know, most software engineers would have heard of the uh, capability maturity model, which today is a central mode of process control in this industry. Where did this come from? This goes back to work done for the US Department of Defense by Carnegie Mellon University in order to help them evaluate software vendors. What is interesting is that it remained a fairly niche kind of, let's say, measurement tool until Indian firms picked it up, improvised on it, built it further, and in some ways gave the kind of scale required to make it a globally accepted and understood tool for measurement. Now they needed a tool of measurement that was acceptable to their US clients and a tool developed in the Carnegie Mellon University would be acceptable to most US clients. 
but the tool also needed a bunch of adopters who could provide the scale. So there is this nice virtuous cycle of dependence, so to speak. These are two examples of this process of building credibility that the industry engaged with in its early years. So for now, we've been like gently discussing the Indian IT industry as a whole. But do you think that given that there are a large number of firms that are operating in this segment and there are a lot of successful firms like TCS, Infosys, Cognizant and there are a lot of multinational firms as well. So do you think that after a certain amount of time they started diversifying and building and their own niche space? Or this trend? Well, uh, you know, I don't know but let me interpret this the way I would like to because this there is a certain point of view here that I am partial about and I am since I'm more interested in what Indian IT services firms do uh, in general uh, and here I would include Cognizant in that group even though Cognizant is headquartered in New Jersey. I think it's interesting how after the Y2K event, after uh, you know the year 2001 when a whole host of Indian firms participated in confronting the Millennium Bug, bug and proved their credibility worldwide. I would say in many ways that was the point at which the credibility of the industry as a whole got established. Thereafter, you may see a certain divergence in how the strategies of the different leading firms have evolved. And let's just take you know two contrasting examples, so to speak, TCS and Cognizant. If you look at analyst reports, uh, analyst recommendations today or their you know, quarterly announcements, both of them are doing reasonably well. Cognizant seems to have stumbled in the latest announcement, but if you look at the trend over the last several years, they, they are leading, so to speak, the pack. I would argue that through the last decade, they have built on slightly different models of strategy. And here we can think in terms of uh, a framework that's very useful uh, provided by Pankaj Khemawat, who's looked at co issues of concern to global strategy, who says that essentially there are three basic strategies that firms use when they go global. One is the strategy of aggregation, that is you pay attention to scale and that is where you derive your advantage. The second is the strategy of adaptation, that is you seek to provide customized solutions to different kinds of customers in different parts of the world and you would note that there is a contradiction in the logic of aggregation and adaptation right and there is a third he argues the logic of arbitrage where instead of trying to change what you do you take advantage of the intrinsic advantages of a, or you take advantage of the distinctive aspects of a certain location or a certain you know domain so for example uh, the whole idea of uh, providing software services out of India to the US, many believe is premised on low cost, which is an aspect of arbitrage, but there are many other aspects of arbitrage. There is the asymmetry in the talent pools, the asymmetry in the uh, in the clock, right? So when it's night there, it's so there are many opportunities for arbitrage. Arbitrage is what provided the foundation for this industry. But if you look at what TCS and Cognizant did on that base of advant uh, arbitrage is that I would suggest that TCS has gone down the route of aggregation right? and Cognizant has gone down the route of adaptation over time and these two different strategies get revealed in the announcements they make and the way their structures have evolved over time. So for example, Cognizant's much uh, you know, wanted uh, two in a box model is essentially a model that tries to give the service quality or claims to give the service quality or service experience of a top tier consulting firm at the price point of an IT services firm. Right? It is essentially building on the ad adaptation advantage. Whereas if you look at TCS and how uh, they have been talking of reliability and some years ago they had this experience certainty campaign that builds upon this whole logic of aggregation. Can we, what else can we use scale for? Well, we can use scale for reliability, which no one has really done in that manner so far. So 
they both built on aggregate uh, arbitrage as did the entire industry and then they diverged. So that's one way of looking at how even within this industry which a lot of people believe is a highly commoditized industry in which the only thing that matters is cost, there's a lot of strategic differentiation. And so, like, how do you see the industry going forward like, from this point of time? How do you see what, like, what, what will be your... That's, Raghav, a very difficult question to answer, right? And uh, I would hesitate to venture any prediction. This is a very interesting industry with uh, several dynamics in terms of innovation as well as in terms of the possibilities for entrepreneurship that they provide. That said, I would, uh, in fact, continuing from the earlier point I made about adaptation and aggregation, I would think that in many ways in this industry, strategy is organization. To break out of the clutter in this industry, you need to pay attention to structure. Structure is typically seen as subordinate to strategy. To me, it would seem that at least in the coming years, structure will be the essential source of competitive advantage in this industry. So I think uh, we had a very stimulating discussion with Professor Pant, uh, within the, the general perceptions of the Indian IT industry of being like not being very innovative and playing the cost factor. I think there are some of the perceptions that uh, Sir tried to drive away through his uh, through his insights on the topic. Uh, we thanks thanks uh, Sir for spending time with us on this topic. Thank you so much, Raghav. It was my pleasure. It was great talking to you.